These people of this era, they knew how to harness a charge for magnetism. Nikolai like Tesla told us about the, uh, you know, the unlimited potential. All you needed to do was tease it out. They used the things called resonators. These things here with mercury in balls. Some, some people say red mercury, but mercury in balls. Into resonators, they would oscillate and vibrate in the wind or in the ether, and they would create a charge which would go down into these things here, which are tiles. Tiles, um, they're basically conductive, and they would be used later for energy, free energy. The free energy of the civilization we regard as Tataria, okay? And they were in a golden age. They, if you think to yourself, oh, well, they invented the railways, the underground, and they did all of this stuff in the 1800s, there's hard evidence, right? They were actually digging the railways out, and they were already there. Same for the underground, uh, London Underground, for example. There's the crown and resonators that you get on top of buildings. You see them all over the place still. There's some in, I see them in Bournemouth in the town centre. They had some antiquitech, still old uh, Victorian antiquitech on some of the buildings. And this is essentially what I have covered. I covered this by going through ancient manuscripts, um, lead Van der Haar atlases from 1733, and I noticed an abundance of churches. Um, and then I just put two and two together, and I thought, well, then, you know, the higher I can get, the more electromagnetic potential, more static potential. So the higher up you go, like a church spire, um, you're up there, and you put a resonator on top, it makes perfect sense. And I also think post-reset there was more EM activity than there is now. Uh, the people's clothes uh, sort of suggest that they, uh, they got some sort of protection on. You know, the women always wear uh, long brilliant gown, gowns, which makes no sense in a muddy environment. They're going to pull them up, but all of the men wear hats. Um, and they all seem to have uniforms as well. So, uh, like, basically, they're all saying good morning to one another, and they're all in black uniforms, like they're morning something. I wonder what it is. So, yeah, the anten antenna, the conductor, the ball of mercury, the resonator here, and then it goes through a frequency into conduits, and then into transformed into usable energy sources. Okay, now they would have had this active up until probably the late 1800s. We think that they were switched off. I've got some evidence if it's still active. I'll actually show you in this post if I get enough time. But they sort of got rid of it by 1900s when the advent of um, Edison, uh, because if everyone's basically got free electricity, where are they going to put the meters? And they've just slayed everybody with their utilities for the last hundred years because you know, I was watching a YouTube video uh, only earlier, and there was people like living in caves in Iran, and they had nothing, and they didn't need anything, and they weren't particularly worried, and there was no one at their door either. And they didn't seem to have a care about anything. Um, you know, they, they didn't have any resources, and they didn't have any electricity, they didn't seem too bothered about it either. So, all uh, China, Japan, all of these things, these are also resonators and they're on tops of pagoda buildings. Everyone's got their own version of Antiquitech. Here is an old picture of Russia. What you see the, is abundance on the old photographs of these things here. U-bends. What you don't see is any wires attached to them. They're not the telegraph, because we can see the telegraph in other pictures alongside. These things are just there, and they're next to these things, which is electricity generator, gener generators, and then it's fed down into these things, which are these U-bends, and then that is circulated through, um, I don't know if you noticed the amount of steel bollards and chains that are all in antiquity and railings which they all removed in World War II. Um, they said that was for the war effort, it wasn't, it was to cut down antiquitech. Trams, um, in the past, um, were they all run by a horse cart or, or overhead electricity? Not in this case. You can make your own mind about what the propulsion is for this, but it's going over a steel bridge which has antiquitech. This thing has got something inside which is self generated It's picking up electricity straight from the ether and it's running on that. And that's exactly what they were doing. Cars were electric before they were petrol. The internal combustion engine, and we're still on it after 130 years, makes no sense whatsoever. These bends here, no wires between them, they were energy transference. This tram here is in the centre of Moscow. What is this propulsion? There's no wires above it, there's no horses on it. This is in the days before the motor car, when it's still a horse and cart. 
So I think they're using three energies on trams, and some of the trams show you these things inside. I can't tell you what they are, but this ball inside, um, we see quite a bit in antiquity. We've got some ideas of what this ball can be, but it's a magnetic device, um, which I'm going to do on a future post. Okay? Um, I've also talked about circuit board cities. Now, it seems that all of the cities are on older grid patterns, and places like um, Angkor Wat in Cambodia can be literally overlaid with the motherboard of the computer, and they're identical. And church floors have got conduits for motherboards and computers. Now, why would they be doing that? Because the whole thing is acting like a computer. The whole thing melted down like a computer melts down and gets reset. This place has been designed a long time ago, and we have been reset. We can see the existence of the older world. And this, this um, circuit board city, okay, is in everywhere. You can see it everywhere. You can see in Siberia, uh, parallel lines, I post them on my channel, that go for hundreds of miles, perfectly straight, perfectly perpendicular. Some of these people are in these petroglyphs there in the past, but what we're saying is, is, is the grid system for an older world, older civilization, highways, cities, etc. You can see these lines all over Nevada and places like that in America. These lines, these petroglyphs, these grids are worldwide. Uh, this place, so this is the SkyTrain. Um, this is in a German city close to Frankfurt. Um, and basically, it's using electricity, and it's at the turn of the last century. This is 1900. This thing was built in the 1800s, and you can see this is an old world which they built everything on horse and carriage, yet for some reason they're able to put up these massive steel gantries, this massive steel, uh, you know, thing for holding the train, and it's driving on electricity when the rest of the world is apparently on horse and carriage, but not so. You can see how superior and advanced these people are at this time. Um, I think, because there's um, evidence Liverpool had a sky train and they got rid of it by the 60s. Uh, Philadelphia, New York, other places had sky trains as well. Um, I think that the whole place had a lot of sky trains in the past. Um, but you can see the size of these uh, viaducts, it just shoots through. Look at the size of these uh, buildings in the past. Superior architecture. They used to use a thing called the divine. Oh, excuse me. What two? Um, divine principles based on sacred geometry, okay? They don't do that in the modern day at all. They can't do it. They've lost the technology or they're just not going to repeat it. Buildings were living buildings. They're made of stone. Stone is crystalline by structure. You know, crystal holds memory. It's in your computer. You know, it's a silicon chip. These buildings were conscious. You can feel it. I've been into some, when, you know, when I was back in my merchant navy days, I used to go into some of these big Russian buildings. I go in there, the ceiling was massive high. I thought like I was going to get a nosebleed. You know, this thing was overpowering, you know, when it's a building. How can a building be doing that to you? But, um, excuse me. So, yeah, they were using amazing technology like that. Now, Antiquatech, this was caught last summer. Now, if you can imagine the energy fields, like you get off the top of pyramids, okay, electromagnetic or electric magnetic energy field vortex or torus traveling above it, and it's been, you know, you can see there, there are a couple of spotted here in America here above, and it's basically freaked them out a bit. And I've also got some evidence of um, act Antiquatech still active, excuse me, let me just get rid of that. Oh, excuse me. How do I just make that smaller? Excuse me. Uh. Damn. Uh -huh. Oh, there you go. Oh, damn. Excuse me. What about that? So, um, can't take the tech. Now, this is um, a temple in Angkor Wat, um, excuse me, in uh, Phnom Penh the capital of Cambodia. You know that? So some of them are still doing it. Okay, now I was in the Czech Republic uh, in 2021 and it's just full of Antiquatech and literally at night when you go around you can see like an aura or a glow around the Antiquatech still to this day. I think there's still a lot of them. There's still um, 
primed for active antiquitech, you know? And in this case, it's still going. And we've got um, a backup collaboration for that as well, because there's a YouTuber called UAP who found a magazine cover um, with that, um, you know, basically doing that on the front. Uh, whatever, that's like a, uh, St. Elmo's fire, you know, similar to, similar to that effect, but static electricity. And it's got that cracking and that kicking, you know? Very unusual. So that's some evidence of Antiquitech active uh, still to this day. So that is one of my one more of my discoveries. Excuse me, with the microphone. Um, and how long have I got here? He's not there, is he? So what I'm, another thing I discovered, and I covered it quite a bit in my book actually, is um, this technology. You have good at mine. Um, the churches, um, or what I call the church devices, of energy centres were once healing centres. So what I suggest is after a reset, the people that come along after a reset, which we regard as arrivals, because most people have been in bunkers, have gone underground, <laughs> and they come up and they find these churches with nothing to do with God or religion, by the way, until they took these over, and these pipes, these pipe organs, which are all connected together, um, they produce a sound, a resonance, a vibration, and this vibration can heal you. Okay, they can eliminate a four, three, two, for example, frequency. So these these places, churches, were healing centers. People used to go in there. They used to be elevated and exhilarated by the organ music. When they came out of there, they were like, "Oh my God, I'm born again." That was God. It wasn't God. It was the organ uh, that did it. But. So, um, it's good for your organs, or anything else that begins with org. Um, there was one note, which is called the brown note, which they um, basically removed in the 1700s, because apparently it was affecting people in the pews a little bit too much, it was getting embarrassing. So they removed that note, they dropped the tone, um, but it is a technology also that can create a charge. <laughs> that can create a charge. You know, the, I'm going to cover briefly, if I've got enough time, the fasces, which is... That thing there, which is what you see in Roman um, iconography, which is a bundle of sticks pressed together, which I proposed, and I got really popular actually, were a type of weapon used in the antique world, which is akin to a dew weapon or a phaser, something like that, along those lines. That was the bad side of it, but the good side of it right, was healing, making plants grow for, with electroculture, making plants grow four times the size. So the key was, with this technology, which is regarded as technasmia, which is an arm of Antiquitech, another thing that I um, unfolded, was that they placed these, these beautiful organs, under these stained glass windows, which were treated with lead and specific properties, and these, uh, they, they work like car speakers. They augment the resonance and the sound out into the ether outside so everyone outside in the community is, is invigorated is on a higher state of consciousness literally being the best they can and you can see it in the pictures of these people in the day, everyone is healthy I know they say that we were all ch chucking buckets of pee out to the window and had no culture whatsoever but that is not the case guys we were highly, highly cultured in the past more so than this, no this is going backwards. We've come backwards a lot, guys. You can just see it. Look at the handwriting of the people in the 1800s and you'll see exactly what I mean. That creativity is gone. None of us do that anymore. None of us. And the skills we need to like, literally survive, like sewing, knitting, woodcraft, anything that we would need outside of the internet is lost to us. So you can see a Jesuit church here. And these windows, they all have a somatic pattern. If you don't understand somatics, Vibration causes a pattern in water or sand. Each vibration causes a different cymatic frequency. And these windows are all set at a separate cymatic frequency to do a separate job. And these organs create the resonance and the sound. They're augmented through the stained glass windows, which have lead qualities in them and other properties as well. Um, especially the rose windows. There's literally magical properties for them. And they are beautiful. They are beautiful windows, these uh, stained glass windows. And you can see the pipes on the other, they're facing out into the church for people to get the full blast of this organ music, which is where it was at in the past. Healing, 
well-being, electroculture, better environment, better energy in the air, full stop, not, you know, not that, uh, everything is, uh, up, and that's what these things create, where it is now, it is now, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not missing it, I've been around 56 years, things were not like this years ago, you know, the, the, the 90s were okay, if I remember rightly, they were okay, not brilliant, but they were okay, so um, let me just show you, Fache, so um, this was probably one of my biggest deep codes, um, where you get a bundle of rods put together, okay, and it creates a charge when you do so. And this thing is encoded right through antiquity. You can see it on all sorts of buildings. This is the Fasches and the Libris. And they actually state um, in the official narrative this was a weapon, it was used as execution. I'm suggesting this is an ancient electromagnetic weapon, and I'm suggesting that the technology of the ancients was electromagnetics. Okay, magnetism. Not like today, with Explosive technologies, this is implosive technologies. This is where it's going at. There's, no, there's just no toxics, there's just no waste, there's no... These are uranium rods, which coincidentally look exactly like the fashions. I've been thinking all along about the nuclear hoax, and I've been thinking that, you know, they're boiling water using um, fashions radiation, rather than uh, the uranium that they say is, you know, also dangerous to get a hold of, and all of the mining. And this is my laser. My laser is exactly the same as a fasces and does exactly the same thing. It's a laser. It's built the same as a fasces, all bounded, rods put together, and it's exactly the same as an undersea cable. This was put down under the Atlantic Ocean, apparently by the Great Western, Brunel's famous ship, and it was the first under-Atlantic sea cable to connect Europe to America. They were supposed to put it down in the 1860s. This thing, if you look at it on the side, is exactly the same as a fascist. And I put it, it's exactly the same as a church window. Because we're all looking at the same technology. Allow me to continue. There's the sea cable that apparently went into there. And I think it was there already. And there you can see the outside of a somatic window. I'll just show you that before I show you this. So, there's experiments you can do with, you know, uh, oscilloscopes, uh, Words experiments like your motos, where they show you, you know, human feelings like love and um, empathy will express beautifully in uh, water. And words like hate or despise will look like lumps of poo in water. Um, these are somatic patterns and they are the same as what you exhibit in church windows, showing you that church windows were a somatic science and they were a resignation science, and this place is missing out big time. This comes back, and the whole world will benefit. In the beginning was the word. Word is a vibration. First words in the Bible, in the beginning was the word, and then the word was God. The word was love, I think. Um, DNA, uh, I think that's a thing, but the somatic patterns on an oscillator here, and they're exactly the same as what you get with church windows. Not only church windows, star forts. If you don't know about star forts, these are everywhere in the world. There's at least 10,000 we know of. They were supposed to have been there, put there in antiquity, probably around the Middle Ages, they think. Um, they say they were defensive um, bastions, but that's not so because everyone in the world shared exactly the same plans for the star forts. They are exactly the same as the science of church windows. It is fractal geometry breaking off. This is showing you this is a highly advanced science and it's nothing to do with um, knights and horses and cannons and battles because that's what they want us to think we were. And I really don't think that's all we are. I, don't, I think it's all bullshit. I don't think that we're anybody's going battling anywhere. That all of the wars are on television, you know? And um, the bombing campaigns of World War II, that had to be something we're just getting rid of antiquity. You know, Dresden, for example. You know, there's no reason that should have happened to, you know, a civilian centre. All those people, it's just absolute murder. And what is it? The most beautiful pearl of an an antiquity in the whole of Europe. You know, and it just all got burnt out. To hide this technology of the past, to hide this beautiful antiquity. So this is the flower of life, but it's also identical to when you look down a fashion because it is all exhibiting the same thing. It's all interconnected and it's all exactly the same science. Fashion science. And that's what it's all about.